my name is David Gowdy. Welcome to the interview. And today we have got two special guests all the way from Australia, uh, Rod and Nancy Walsh. And they, are, they belong to Creation Ministries International. And the, first of all, they're going to share their personal testimony, the journey of what God has done in their lives. And then a little bit later, they're going to talk about their work and why they're here in Ireland at this particular time. So Rod and Nancy, welcome to Ireland. Thank well, you very really much. Really is a pleasure having you here today Great in to our be studio. Here. So tell me first of all a little bit about your personal journey, how you found Christ and what was the catalyst for that? Uh, you want me to go first? Then? Yeah. Well, um, as a child, I actually um, spent a few years in the choir in the Anglican Church up to the age of 10 in England. But when we left for Australia at the age of when I was 10 years of age, I never went to church after that for probably over 20 years, apart from marriages and births and, and stuff like that. But, um, but the thing what uh, brought me to Christ was, uh, uh, you see, at this particular time, my God was actually drinking a lot of beer mm -hmm. and also playing sport. I think that's uh, a lot of people's gods today. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I was far from God. I, I probably didn't realise it at the time, but uh, um, anyway, uh, one day I was um, at a home show mm -hmm. and uh, of all places, there was a Bible society stand and uh, they're selling these Bibles for cheap. So I thought, oh, I'll buy one of those. So I bought a Bible and, and uh, took it home and started to read the Bible. Anyway, um, after a little while, I started to really find that my life was out of kilter with God. Um, and, um, and I started to get really convicted of my sin. But, and then one day I was actually at home and um, I just remember lying on the floor, probably crying for up to two hours, I think. And God showed me a video, as it were, like a vision of my life. And uh, he brought back everything I'd done in that time. And I, I just found that, um, well, I agreed with God. I was far from God and I certainly wasn't going to heaven. But then it, God in his wonderful mercy, he showed me just a vision of Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I literally saw every sin that I committed wiped clean by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then God said to me, get up, you're now clean. Well, from that day on, I mean, I was alive for God, like you wouldn't believe. Mm. I mean, you know, we're straight away doing things, you know, for the Lord, yeah. you know. We're, we're running, it wasn't long before we're running outreach Sunday schools. Mm -hmm. I was an elder in a church and uh, all sorts of things that we're involved with. I did, I did three years of prison ministry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going into prison every Thursday night for three years ministering to the people in jail. So, uh, yeah, that's how I actually come to know Christ. So yeah. this was really a Damascus Road experience. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's quite dramatic. That, Very dramatic, yeah. You know, you think just getting a Bible, what what harm could come getting a Bible, yeah, you know? It's Maybe just out of curiosity, <laughs> and then suddenly all these things just begin to happen. Then mm. your life is totally radically changed. Amen. Completely changed. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Nancy? What, yeah. What's your story? Yeah. Well. As a, a young child, I mm. also went to Sunday school and, mm. uh, and I quite enjoyed going to Sunday school. But after a little while, actually what happened was I was going to a particular Sunday school and they used to pick us up and take us mm. there and, and drop us off home. But then all of a sudden they stopped doing that. So I never went back again. And uh, I, there were odd occasions when we did go back when my grandfather died mm. and we thought, you know, the family thought it was good to go to church, so we'd go to church. But it, it really didn't change us at all. And, and then, uh, mm. like Rod, I just uh, drifted away from that. And, um, and it wasn't till after we were married and we had children and I thought, you know, we really should send our children to Sunday school. And I said this to Rod and he said, yeah, that's a good idea, you know, yeah. because we'd both had that background of <laughs> Sunday school. But then I said to him, but um, if we send them to Sunday school, then we need to go to church. Because when I was brought up, my parents didn't go to church, but they sent me to Sunday school. So I thought I didn't like the thought of double standards. But he said to me, all right, then you take them. But in those days, I was very shy and wouldn't go anywhere without him. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, if you're not going, I'm not going. So we didn't do anything. And it was just a little while later that 
Rod um, saw something on the TV mm. that made him think about going to church and mm. he said, oh, look, I think we might start church next week. And that was good. <laughs> we went to church and we felt really good about ourselves because we were going to church, <laughs> yeah. but we still weren't born again. Yeah. Right. And um, anyway, after a while, I, I just felt our lives were going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, they weren't going anywhere because I think if we hadn't met the Lord when mm. we did, we would not be together today. Mm. And uh, anyway, we, um, we were both searching at this time. We were heavily involved in the church that we were going to, doing ministry in the church and everything. And really, we didn't know much. Yeah. And we're trying to teach other people. Mm. But then uh, after Rod got this Bible at the um, home show, we both started to read it. And unlike Rod, I didn't have such a dramatic conversion but I really felt as though I was really unclean mm -hmm. and God spoke to me while I was in the shower and uh, mm -hmm. and it was just like you know I cried out to God and said God I, I just feel so unclean I don't feel right before you mm -hmm. and and it was like he was pouring his spirit mm -hmm. on me like the shower coming down a showering mm -hmm. down his spirit upon me and I, I don't know how long it was in, I think it must have been the <laughs> longest shower I'd ever had and uh, anyway I got out of that shower and I just felt so clean and I felt mm -hmm. so good and, and I looked out the window and it looked like the grass had turned <laughs> really green and the flowers were brilliant colours and, and it was just amazing mm -hmm. and I said this to Rod and, I, and, and from that day on we just had this hunger and desire to read the word and, and mm. really do God's yeah. will, not our will anymore. Yeah. And, and God really came in and healed mm. our marriage at yeah. that particular time. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we, um, like Rod, I went into prison ministries and, and I was in the Sunday school and teaching and um, also doing ladies groups and uh, worship leading and things like that. We were pretty heavily involved and, and uh, it wasn't till God called us to a halt and yeah. said, no, I don't want you doing any more of that. Mm -hmm. And then God spoke to Rod about the ark. Yeah. Mm. And since then we've been going around with Noah's mm. ark doing that ministry. Th this is the wonderful thing, just listening to these two. This is transformational. Mm. When Christ comes into a life, he changes everything. Mm. This is not just a Sunday go to meeting thing. This is a seven day a week change in your whole life mm. for eternity. Mm. And you've heard the testimony of these two. Now, my testimony, your testimony may never be as dramatic as that, but nonetheless, it's life changing. It is genuinely transformational. And these two are the evidence mm. of that. Now, after all of that, mm. you come to the point now, well, what do we do now? The Lord seems to say, well, look, you've done this and this and this and this. Stop all of that. Mm. What comes next? Is that the point then you got involved with the Ark and Creation Ministries or mm. how, how did that come about? Well, uh, it's, it's interesting, yeah, we were so, so busy going into jail, look, doing, uh, you know, outreach Sunday school stuff, eldership and so forth. And then God is seen wanted to, to pull us out of everything. Mm. And so we, we actually found it really strange mm. just going to church and not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long after that that God, I think, wanted to sit me down because I got this sore back and I was in bed for four days. Mm -hmm. And uh, and on the first day, well, like I said, I, uh, I love to read the Bible. So I started reading the Bible from the beginning in Genesis. When we got to the account of Noah, it's like God just illuminated the whole mm -hmm. thing. And he said, Rod, build a model of Noah's Ark. Well, I thought my back's gone now, my head's gone. But I knew it was God. It was just such a clear message. And, uh, and on the second day, uh, uh, I was, uh, I'd already scaled it down. I've sketched it out. I'm just ready to go on the second day. And all of a sudden on the second day, God said, spoke to me again and said, turn the radio on. Well, I turned the radio on. Couldn't believe it. They were talking about Noah's Ark. Mm. But they were mocking it, mm. laughing about, oh, who'd believe in Noah's Ark in, mm. in this scientific age? And God said, see what I mean? Build a model. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I got working on this model and uh, when it was about four days before I got out of bed. And, and, um, and anyway, the, the model was finished in roughly about seven months or so. 
That's a lot of time building. Well, it took me about, I worked on it every night yeah. after, after work. Yeah. So about three hours a night, 200 days, yeah. took about 600 hours to build this model. Wow, that's a lot. Mm. And, and of course, a lot of people would say, yeah, but why would you do that? You know, like, <laughs> and, and I had no idea apart from God saying, mm. when I finish the model, people just come to me and ask questions, you mm. see. So we really had no idea what was going to happen. Mm. Anyway, uh, nothing happened just for a few weeks. And then in January 1998, two days before a huge waterfront festival in Geelong, I mean, thousands come to these, uh, this festival every year, year after year. And of course, it's a boating festival. Mm. And, um, and two days before, God spoke to me and said, submit your model. Well, you don't turn up with two days notice. No. You've got to book in, you've got to pay them a lot of money. Mm. But anyway, uh, I found out who the organiser was. I got on the phone, I said, look, I've got a model of the oldest boat on record. <laughs> Would you be interested? That was crafty. Yeah. <laughs> I think God gave me the word. And you know what? They, there's a place there now. It's called the Parisian Restaurant. Mm -hmm. But it used to be called just the Wharf Shed. Mm -hmm. And Nancy and I were in that Wharf Shed for three days. We never sat down. Mm -hmm. We had half a dozen, 15, 20 people, you know, just firing questions at us for three mm -hmm. days. Well, from there, we got invited to churches and schools. And, and during that time, uh, you know, people come and say, oh, do you give talks? Well, I had to sort of think for about two seconds. <laughs> yes, I give talks. Because yes. I'd done Sunday school yeah. stuff. And, everything. and so, uh, of course, I didn't have a really a, a talk prepared, but uh, it didn't take me long to sort of yeah. work something out and start giving talks on. And, and uh, in fact, in the first seven years of our ministry, we used to call ourselves Noah's Ark Ministries. And uh, we travelled around a lot of Australia and we did 600 venues part-time. Mm. And this is, this is uh, while, while I was still working full-time. You, you mean you just packed up your car and just drove to venues? Well, what, what happened was we, we prayed, we, we said to the Lord, we said, Lord, we'll, just, we'll go wherever you send us. And it was interesting. Um, very early on in the piece, somebody ra rang us up and said, can you come to Mildura? Well, Mildura is seven hour drive from our place, mm. just for a school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that's a, a long way, but we prayed about it. We said, no, we'll go. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we went up for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, you know, we did that school, but by the time we finished on Sunday, we'd done seven talks. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord told me on the Saturday night, mm. I've got a talk on Sunday. But I, had, I didn't know about it on Saturday night. Anyway, Nancy was talking in the motel to a guy who was a visiting Presbyterian minister. And she told him about the art. Well, he'd come in. Anyway, he told me, he said, you do the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you're off and running. We're off and running. You're off and running and you're doing all of this. Yeah. Uh, you're known as the Ark Man. Yes, yeah. And, and the, this Ark is a wonderful, it's a tremendous model. Mm. And you do a whole, like a walk through it and everything. Yeah. But yeah. You can see it on video. Yeah, you can just follow yeah, you through the whole yeah. arc. Now, when did then you get involved with Creation of Ministries International? How did that come about? Well, this? very early in the piece, um, Don Batten, who's yeah. one of the scientists at uh, Creation Ministries, he, he gave a talk yeah. at, at our church. And at that, that particular time, I said, look, you might be interested. Yeah. I, I built a model of Noah's Ark. I said, you know, I wasn't really expecting him to come out. But he said, I said, would you like to come out? Oh, well, Don came out and he had a look at the art, took photos of everything. Yeah. And then they, they actually did an, in, uh, uh, an article on us mm -hmm. in the um, magazine um, a few the months page, later, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, um, and so we were loosely connected then with mm -hmm. Creation Ministries for that first seven years. Uh, but what happened then was, after we'd been doing all of these... Uh, meetings going all over the place. Once we went to Port Macquarie mm -hmm. and this lady said, come up and do some meetings. I had no idea what, what, what we're actually going to do. But by the end of nine days ministry, mm -hmm. I'd done 20 meetings. <laughs> One day I did four public schools, nearly 2,000 children. So as well as all the churches sure. and the schools, yeah. we, we did a lot of meetings. So God just sort of opened those, continued to open doors. Okay. And, uh, and then God put on, on, on my heart to, to have an ark van because we were traveling around in a station wagon, you yeah. see. 
So um, I started to build these two other models mm. to go in the side of the van. And um, it took a few years. And at first when we wanted to check out the, you know, the cost of the van and everything, it was going to be $170,000. Oh, so we couldn't afford it. No, that's big money. Isn't <laughs> yeah. It? And so we just let it lie for a while. And I even did an Abraham and... Uh, I didn't get another wife or anything, but <laughs> but I was going to do a trailer, you see, and, and that didn't really work. And then she said, I'm not going out in that. So <laughs> so we, we, we shelved that and uh, sold that off. But uh, but anyway, at the right time, God put on my heart again to get this van. But instead of having it professionally fitted out, fit it out yourself. So I got the shell made. And uh, and, and so that was really interesting. Mm. And, um, and, and one interesting thing... Over about five weeks, um, I organised finance because I was going to, I just run out a, a lease on a, on a car, business car. Mm. And I thought, well, I'll just lease it. So, so what happened was I, I arranged finance over five weeks. Two days before I went to sign off into my bank account from the other side of the world was the exact money I was going to borrow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and that meant then I could actually leave work earlier and so God sort of worked it out so that I could pull out of my full-time job mm -hmm. and I think for a couple of years I, I worked one month on two months off mm -hmm. traveling with the van mm -hmm. of course when we uh, go back a little bit when we uh, first got the van creation ministries asked us what are we going to do with it well um, I said, well, just probably what we've been doing before. God's been opening the doors. And uh, anyway, Carl asked us uh, to come on board with them. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, he said, we'll just organise your itinerary. Mm -hmm. You just turn up. And I think in our first year uh, with CMI, I did 168 meetings. They <laughs> 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 really had That's work. really busy. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, some people listening to this yeah. may be sceptical. And they may say, well, in this scientific age that we mm. live in, mm. and with all the talk from Richard Dawkins and mm. Stephen Hawking and all yeah. of these so-called new atheists about today and mm. all of their strident mm. talk against creation, uh, they may say, well, well, what's the point? Does anybody believe this? Does anybody believe that Noah's Ark was really true mm. or was it not just a metaphor for something else that God was mm. saying, the way mm. they say about Adam mm. and Eve was just a metaphor that God didn't, it wasn't really real? Mm. What would your answer be to that, Rod? Well, I'd say the evidence is overwhelming in our favour. I mean, you look at the fossil record, it screams catastrophe, yeah. rapid burial, yeah. uh, stasis, no change, no intermediate fossils. So... The evidence is actually with us, really. Mm. It's not with the evolutionists. And so uh, yeah, what I find is as we uh, present this evidence to people, I mean, I've been into churches where I could honestly say 70% before the meeting were theistic evolutionists or gap theorists or mm. believed in long ages. Mm. And, and after the meeting, 90% were six-day creationists. Just from, what, from the feedback, people coming up to see me. Isn't it the truth that, that the evidence that you're presenting is hid? They're not getting it in school. They're not getting mm -hmm. it in university. That's they're, true. They're not getting it in church. That's either. true. No. Yeah. It is hidden. And, of course, a lot of this evidence um, can only be received mm -hmm. when, when presented, these days anyway, by creation ministries, yeah. uh, which is sad, really, because uh, I think it is hidden. Because mm -hmm. in your lectures, uh, for instance, you... you show photographically you show the rocky uh, the, the grand canyon and the, yeah. the different layers and stratas mm. and so forth i mean why can they not believe that what holds them back from believing the evidence that's that's there before them yeah. that they have no answer for actually no well the thing is when you look at some of the real obvious evidence you know like um uh, no erosion between knife edge differences of strata you know yeah. for supposed millions of years you know how how could a a, a massive tree mm. fossil stand up mm. while supposedly another two million years of yes. strata was laid yeah. down. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense, does yeah. it? I, I think the only real answer to that is actually spiritual deception. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about that our hearts be broken towards God. Yeah. And as, as our hearts are broken towards God, it's like God just 
lifts off the blinkers. Yeah. And I think that's the real answer because the, the evidence, the logic actually really goes with the creationist. And uh, I, I had a geologist come into one of my meetings one time and uh, brought in by a friend, mm -hmm. but come up to, come, uh, came up to see me after the meeting and said, look, Rod, I want to tell you, I came in a total sceptic, thought this was a whole lot of rubbish, and then told me going out as a creationist, a believer. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. Romans tells us, does it not, that God has already yeah. given his creation a, as a signpost to him. Yes, mm. yes. It won't save our souls, but as a signpost to him mm. that he is a wonderfully created being yes. that created all of this. Yes. And if we, if we refuse that and we don't accept it, there's a reason for that. Because mm. if we accept that God is the creator, yeah. then it follows then that we have to believe in God yes. and then what are we going to do about that belief? It can't just stop there. No. It leads to something. So at some point we deliberately choose to hide that evidence, to deny that evidence, mm. because we don't want to deal with the God issue That's in, in mm. our personal lives. Mm. Yeah. And again, you have the, the new atheists who, who mm. are very yeah. loud in their protests against creation and so forth. Yes. But when you get right down to it, isn't it a spiritual problem? I think it is. It's more that than an intellectual problem or a scientific mm. problem. It's yes. a spiritual problem that man has to deal with in yes. their hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, Romans one twenty is very clear, isn't yeah. it? That uh, people are without excuse. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. these days, I think, there's even less excuse. You know, when you think a pinhead of DNA yeah. is equivalent to books piled to the moon 500 times. I mean, people a few years ago didn't have that sort of understanding of the incredible complexity of God's creation. And so when God is saying, well, the evidence is before our eyes, you would think, wouldn't you, logically, that scientists who are delving into this see the incredible complexity of a cell. How could they believe that this, this could happen by accident? Yeah. I mean, the odds are absolutely unbelievable, yeah. impossible. Yeah. Good. You know, of course, that there are theistic evolutionists yeah. and who, who will not go the whole hog yes. and, and believe in the biblical account. Yeah. Is part of your job, Rod and Nancy, you go to schools, you go to mm. universities, you do lectures, you do talks in churches and in venues all over the, all over mm. the country, indeed all over the world. Is, is part of your job, as it were, uh, to, to re-educate minds, to re-educate people, to show them yeah. and mm. to challenge them with yes. the truth yes. mm. uh, and to help them to come to uh, some kind of an understanding because they're not going to get it in school, they're not going to get it in university, they're not no. going to get it in the media. No. They're going to get the opposite. That's it. Even in museums, yes. even mm. in Ireland, I mean, uh, our, our museum recently refurbished, Ulster Museum, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, where Grips has tried to present creation in it. Yes. It's such a fight against that. Oh, yeah. Even the Giant's Causeway, which was one of our major mm. tourist attractions, I mean, such a hullabaloo yes. because there was a, a about creation there. And then, yes. of course, the everybody can dine on it, you know, and it's just ridiculous, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yes. Yeah. And so you've got a big task on your hands, actually, uh, because there's a lot of people needs to be re-educated on yes. this subject. Oh, yeah. sure. And we admire you greatly for doing that mm. uh, and traveling, because it's not easy, you, you know, you're always mm. on the go and yeah. constantly traveling, but there must be some satisfaction when people come up to you after yeah. a talk, like mm. what you just said, yes. yeah. and you feel, well, that's got through. Yes. I've pre uh, presented an alternative to what yes. they've heard all of their life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some of these scientists, or paleontologists, or whether geologists, whatever, uh, I mean, it, it can be tough for them in the academic world. Yes. Because to become an out and out creationist, yes. mm -hmm. the chances are you're going to lose your job. Possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're maybe, maybe going to get funding cut off. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's going to come a, a crunch at some point. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? What am I going to believe? I'm going to believe the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe. What, I, what I'm doubting now. Mm. And uh, so, God bless you for doing that. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful work. Thank you. And I know that when people go to your lectures, they, they enjoy it. And, and it's not a way over people's heads either. I know that you pitch it to where you're, the yeah. group that you're speaking to, obviously. Yes. And, uh, and you've got good humor in it as well. Mm. Uh, I notice that even that the children 
yes. listening to your yeah. talks as well, and they enjoy it, as well as those who are coming mm -hmm. in a more serious way, even just to try to catch you out and, and to sound <laughs> you out. I'm sure you must get a lot of that, you know, people trying to trip you up. And oh, I love, oh, yes. I love a good sceptic. <laughs> 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 so listen, thank you very, very mm. much for coming in today. We mm. have enjoyed having you and we trust that wherever you go that fresh doors will open up mm. for your ministry and that Creation Ministries will begin to, uh, to, to multiply and mm. to prosper mm. uh, all over the country, indeed all over Europe and the world. Mm. And uh, if you've been listening, watching today, and uh, maybe you're a skeptic, maybe you're the one that Rod talked about and uh, you want to know more about this, at the end of this program, uh, we'll put on the screen for you addresses that you can write to, that you can contact Rod and Nancy and uh, uh, websites and so forth. And there's lots and lots of resources available just for you, particularly if you're a skeptic. Uh, they take that as a challenge yeah. to try to help you. So there's DVDs, there's all kinds of journals, there's magazines, there's all kinds of stuff out there by Creation Ministries International that's just tailor-made for you to try to help you in your journey and trying to come to the knowledge of the truth. So thank you for watching today and God bless you.